To start up Autograph, there's usually an icon on the desktop, so we'll double click on that. Down here is the name or institution and the type of license. Now it always starts off with this choice between standard and advanced. The standard level is a level where there's no radians and there's no calculus, so you can see who that's aimed at. The advanced level uh, has everything. So we'll start off with the standard level. And here we have a blank page. This is the way it starts up. Um, I usually recommend people to have a look at the whiteboard mode first of all, because if this is being used in teaching, uh, the chances are you want the kids at the back to be able to see very nicely. And you can see what happens when it goes into the whiteboard mode. The writing gets a bit bigger. We also get the on-screen keyboard, which is very useful. The one or two other things which uh, you should know about. Uh, for example, here are the modes down here. These are the different modes. You put it into point mode and it stays in modes. And you'll notice that these points only go on to whole number values. And that's because of this button here, snapping to whole number grids. If you want it to snap to point one, then you put points in the middle, and that's okay. But this is a mode, so it stays in that mode until you decide to go back to select mode. Another feature of whiteboard mode is that if you select one thing and then another, you do not need the shift key in order to do multiple selection. So if I wanted to do a straight line through this, or perhaps a perpendicular bisector, uh, I would do a right click. But I immediately notice the right click is also on the object menu, by the way. Immediately it's not there because it's looking as though there are three points, indeed there are. There's a point over here that's still selected from some previous operation. So always be in the habit of clicking nowhere, then click and click and now you've got just the two you want. Clicking nowhere cancels all the previous selections. So now I can do a right click, perpendicular bisector, there it is, and it is indeed a dynamic object. So down here we have the modes, as I say, this is the scribble tool extremely useful because it actually belongs to Autograph. Unlike the scribble tools that live on interactive boards, they tend to belong to the interactive board software rather than Autograph. And this is rubbing out, this is moving the whole scene, this is zooming where you click, this is zooming out where you click, this is doing a rectangle zoom. So there's the modes, don't forget coming back to uh, select mode. There are lots of other ways to get back to select mode by the way. If you're in the middle of scribbling and you want to go to select you can press the escape key as well. That works quite nicely. Up here you have the three page types. You have the statistics page here where you have just one variable along here and up here goes frequency or probability. Here you have the 2D page for everything to do with single points, gradients, vectors, differential equations, everything. And here you have 3D page. So we'll start off with a 2D page and we'll have a look at some objects. First of all I'm going to create a shape in the point mode. So I'm going to go to point mode and go click. Now if I do this in a logical sequence then when they get filled in it'll look alright. Select, grab and right click. It doesn't know what you want to do, that's just a whole set of points. You may want to align a best fit through it, convert it to a data set. I actually want to group to a shape. And that gives me this shape here. And I can need move individual points or the whole thing. So now you've got to think in terms of teaching. It's all very well saying right click, reflect in the x-axis, and there's the answer. It'd be much better if you can get the pen out. So get the pen out and say right. Where is the reflection of this in the x-axis? You can perhaps, perhaps get a, a student to make a suggestion, and it's not beyond the realm's possibilities. They go and suggest something over here. I mean, that is indeed a reflection. It's in the x-direction, but it's a reflection in the y-axis. And, and so hopefully you've now achieved your first aim, which is to get the rest of the students involved, rather than just watching you do this, because the others say, oh, no, it's not that. It's down here. So that's good. It's just what you want them to say. And so they're now and eagerly anticipating this. So if I right click, reflect to the x-axis, and there's the answer, and there's all the reflective properties that you might expect. So we can rub that out. What I'm going to do next is put a point here, and right click, and go to a vertical line. So I want to do a reflection of this yellow one in this vertical line. Well, first of all, can I move this line? No. So the idea of a dependent object is established now. That there is this object which depends on this point. If I move this point, the line has to go with it. 
I've mentioned already about multiple selections, so if I want to select this and this, I must deselect first, select and select, wait for the little black arrow, and then right click, reflection. So that goes over here. So now you can start asking uh, sensible questions. I can say, right, what would happen if this point moved one to the right? What's going to happen to this? Well, there are two units here and two units here. If this moves one to the right, there are going to be three units followed by three units. So the suggestion is that it's going to move two to the right. Okay, let's select this point. The best way to select a point, by the way, is to drag over like that. And this is where the on-screen keyboard comes in if you're on an interactive board or on a tablet, as I am. Because up and down will change the position of the point by, in this case, one unit. So it's going to go up and down, just like that. So if I go to the right, this will in fact do what I want it to do. It will move this point to here, the line must go to, and this will move two to the right. Ready, steady, go. So this is a very important principle that, that all students should try and anticipate what's about to happen before it actually does. And you can have a sort of chase like this. Uh, then you might say, well, uh, let's go to point one. Which point on the original diagram is responsible for this point down here? Um, you might say, well, is it this one? No. Is it this one? No. So trial and error is actually a very inefficient way of solving a problem. It would be much better to reverse engineer it. So here, to here, to here, and it is indeed that point, and because they're all related to each other anyway. Good. There are other sorts of, of uh, transformations you might be interested in. And for these, I'm just going to uh, insert a shape, and I'm going to use the standard shape of a flag. Now, for enlargement or dilation, and also for rotation, we need a point as well as an object. So point and object, and right-click. There it is, rotation and enlargement. I'll do enlargement because it's quite a good one. Let's go back to 2. If I click OK, I've actually got the answer, which I, I don't really want. I want to try and anticipate it first of all. So let's get the pen out. This is going to be enlarged by a scale factor of 2. This point's going to go to here. 2 along and 1 up is going to be 4 along and 2 up. 2 along and 3 up is going to be 4 along and 6 up. 4 along and 2 up is going to be 8 along and 4 up. There we have our shape. So I'm now going to select all of that and right click enlargement scale factor 2 there it goes. So we have successfully anticipated the shape these uh, lines just show you the extremities. If you don't want those lines you just double click on the shape and, uh, and untick those. Deselect, edit, select all scribbles and delete. Now if I select this, let me show you about this very important button here, which is Animate Object. I'm going to animate the object, and it enables me to change the scale factor. This object has a factor in it, as many objects do, uh, and this one has factor. So if I make this bigger, it's going to go up, go up by a step of 0.1, and there it goes. Now if I come down, you can ask the question, what's the scale factor going to be when it's back on top of itself? And you'll be surprised how many say the answer is zero. Of course, the answer has to be one, and then you get zero down here. So what you could do is hide this down here and uh, take it down to, say, minus one, and get them all to anticipate what that shape is going to be, and then reveal. And if you want to, you can select all of those now and do a rotation. See if we can rotate that back to here again. Let's do 90 degrees. And there it goes. Select that. And animate. And run we go. Let's have a look at some simple geometry and circle. Um, I'm going to put a point here. I'm going to draw a circle. Let's have a circle at radius 3. Finish with that. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So um, we have, down here we actually have the equation of the circle. So if you double click on that, you can show whatever's on the status bar in what we call the status box. Uh, or you can do one better than that. You can put 
data actually on the page. So let's have a look at this. Let's do a text box. Now the text box is for this selected object and it's giving you that and I think I'd rather call it point O. So let's do shift O. That means that this is the information you may have noticed that part of it was in red. The bits in red change if you change the object so you can't use that to edit it at all because uh, all you can edit is the stuff in the black. Uh, so likewise if I have nothing selected the text box it means you can put a message on the screen or if you have the circle selected you'll get its equation. So once again you can ask questions like what happens if the center moves from here to here? This is the point minus one one. So what's the equation of the circle going to be? Well it's going to be x plus one all squared and y minus one all squared. And let's just confirm that that is indeed the case. But get them to anticipate first is the rule of the day. There you go. Perfect. Okay, what I'm going to do next though is take off take off all this stuff and that and that and take the axes away and we've now introduced to the idea of Euclidean geometry which is a circle just sitting there quite happily as a circle. So let's put a point here, let's put a point here, let's put a point here. So this circle doesn't know where its centre is or what its coordinates are or anything, it's just a circle. So I'm selecting those two and right click doing a line segment. Selecting those two, right click, do a line segment. Selecting those two, right click, do a line segment. Very straightforward. Deselect, select and select and right click, line segment. So we've got the classic shape for angle at the centre is twice the angle of circumference. So let's measure the angles. Now angles are measured in autograph as that, that and this. Missed it. So this, this and this and then right click. Now you do them in such a sequence that the third point creates an anti-clockwise angle. If you wanted this angle here you do them in the other order. So angle, allow reflex, yes please and OK. So we have an angle here. So the first obvious one to move it around to is 180. Now if you have any troubles moving it around you can always use the arrow keys and it goes in ones. So what's this angle? Get a protractor and measure it. Is it always the same? What's going on here? Well, the angle at the centre is 180, the angle at the circumference therefore is 90. So click and click counterclockwise to click and right click angle. Don't need that anymore and there it is. And obviously I moved that bit. So this is always 90, is it? What happens when we go around here? Can you ever imagine? Yes. Also do this down here at um, if we make this 90 degrees, this is 45, these are all 45s. What would happen if this point goes round to here? Well, let's mark it down here. So what's this angle here? This angle is going to be one half of this angle. Now this angle is 270. So this one is going to be a half of that, which is 135. So I think it's, there's something very special about anticipating this is 135 before this actually goes around and shows that it is 135. I think if you do that without the extra pencil work first, you'll miss it.